We previously reported on the introduction of pre-made food into schools. As time progresses, more shady practices are being exposed, and more people are speaking out. As school started, parents were feeling more of the pain and the topic of pre-made food in the school started to attract a lot of public attention. On September 19, 2023, the Parent Committee of a Foreign Language School in Shenzhen raided a company that supplied meals to the school. One of the company's businesses is preparing meals for students. According to the exposure of the Parents Committee, in the kitchen of this off-site catering company, the frosted liquid flowed across the floor, there was moss on the ground, the tableware was moldy, and the meat was defrosting in water, and the dirty water was all over the floor. It stinks here. Why does it smell so bad here? That's because the water is seeping into the floor, not because of smelling ingredients or plastic bags. It's not the smell of plastic, but it smells terrible. This smell is not normal. Why is the meat black? It's marinated with dark soy sauce. Pre-made food is food that has been processed or cooked in advance and then packaged as semi-cooked or cooked food. They can be heated later for consumption. It's convenient, but is it nutritious or hygienic? Because of the concerns about pre-made food, many parents have chosen to deliver lunches to their children in school. Parents are concerned that centralized kitchens will use pre-made food extensively, which will affect their children's health. Chinese parents are very devoted to their children, and virtually no one is willing to risk their kids' health. One parent in Wuxi said that her child's school provides standardized meals. Meat dishes are semi-processed, vegetables are washed, cut up, and packed in plastic bags. Meals are delivered to the school every other day. What nutrition is left in this type of food? So she resigned from her job and started to deliver meals to her child every day. She isn't the only one with such a reaction. In fact, after pre-made food came into schools, the entrance to some schools have been crowded with parents delivering meals. With nowhere to eat, the kids stand or squat at the entrance to take a few quick bites from the lunch boxes in their parents' hands. This is not the only kitchen found to be problematic. Recently, another foreign language school was also exposed to have serious hygiene problems in its kitchen, supplying rotten and spoiled food to students. This thing looks rancid to me. Does it smell? It's rancid. Why are parents so against pre-made food coming to school? The number one concern is health. The CCTV website released a poll asking what concerns you most about the introduction of pre-made food into schools. The public's biggest concern was food technology and its reckless application. The term food technology and its reckless application is an online expression that appeared over the past two years. It refers to the use of synthetic food as something natural, where a seemingly inconspicuous food item is actually produced through a dozen types of dark technology. For example, a pack of lamb might have no lamb but a synthetic meat made of multiple other ingredients. Let's take a look at what restaurant professionals think about pre-made food and the wonders they can create with them. If you order these three dishes in our restaurant, congratulations, you've won the lottery. Because these three dishes use pre-made ingredients. As for the quality of the ingredients, you can be the judge. First, look at the ingredient list of the garlic spare ribs. It has all the additives and preservatives that are usually used. The shelf life is a year at minus 18 degrees Celsius. This is considered a semi-prepared product, and you still have to fry it up before serving it. Then there's the Five Spice Pork Liver. Its ingredient list looks quite clean. There are no additives. It says to store at room temperature and has a shelf life of 6 months. Wow, this food technology is impressive. This is Pepper Pork Belly Chicken. The ingredient list is also quite clean, but it has flavor additives. The shelf life is 1 year in the absence of preservatives at room temperature. Wow, is food technology so powerful now? Now let's open the bags and see what these products look like, respectively. First, we open the garlic ribs. 
It looks slimy, indescribably disgusting. It has a very strong garlic smell, worthy of its name, garlic spare. Next is the five spice pork liver. It says here it has been brined with five spices. This big chunk looks okay. I sliced it up first, but this small chunk of pork liver looks disgusting. I would never eat a pre-made liver like this. Now I stir fry it with some soy sauce and toppings and serve it to you. Will you find out it's made from pre-made ingredients? Now slice it all up and set it aside in a pot. Then there's the pepper pork belly chicken. I opened it. It has white colored soup inside. Some of the chicken meat has become crumbs. The ingredients list look pretty mediocre this way, but they can become colorful and flavorful after being reworked by the hands of us chefs. Now let's cook them. Everyone take a good look at the appearance of these dishes so you can tell when you eat outside. Under this chef's hands, the original ingredients he wouldn't even want to eat are transformed into something completely different and incredible. First, boil the pork liver and get it out. Then add green peppers, onions, and carrots, together with oil. Pour it out. Then stir fry the dried chili pepper, add the liver, some soy sauce, chicken extract, MSG, and pepper. Mix it evenly and serve it on a plate. Now look at the finished dish. If the boss doesn't tell you that the ingredients are from pre-made packages, would you know? Okay, let's put this dish aside and make the next one, pepper pork belly soup. Now dump the original stock of this pepper pork belly soup, wash the ingredients with water and make your own new base stock for better flavor. Add water to boil, a little bit of milk, and it immediately turns into a white soup. Someone said chefs are like alchemists. There is a little truth to it, right? Now put in the pork belly chicken. Add diced green pepper and red pepper, salt, chicken extract, MSG, ground pepper, and concentrated chicken broth together. Mix well and take it out. It's supposed to be served in a soup bowl. I have it on a plate, so please don't mind it. It looks okay now, right? When it first came out of the package, it's hardly a sight of a hole. Now the last dish, garlic ribs. Have them fried in and out, leave some oil in the pot, Add diced green and red pepper, and chili pepper, stir fry them. Then add the ribs, sprinkle chicken extract, ground pepper, and green onions. Mix well and serve on a plate. Now look at the presentation of these dishes. Can you tell that it uses pre-made ingredients? This dish of garlic spare ribs smells very garlicky with no other odors. The taste is fair. This bag costs about 9 yuan, and the restaurant usually sells this dish for 68 yuan. This 5 spice pork liver tastes a a bit fishy. This bag costs five dollars. You can make two servings. Restaurants usually sell this dish for 38 yuan. Finally, this pepper pork belly chicken. The pork belly is very tender. It's made from some trimmings, not the best quality. The chicken is falling off the bone. The cost of this bag is 11 yuan. The restaurant usually sells it for 48 yuan a piece. To summarize, these few pre-made dishes are not good quality, but because of the low cost, some restaurants will still use them. It's easy to operate, fast, and highly profitable. Such a few dishes. If if you eat out, will you be able to tell that they are made using pre-made ingredients? One of the most criticized aspects of pre-made food is the periodic table of elements on the ingredient list, which is mind-boggling. Here is a list of ingredients for a pre-made dish shown before. It has 7 additives and a shelf life of 365 days. The year-long shelf life is an example of food technology and its reckless application. This is precisely what countless parents cannot stand. The school claims that the dosages are in accordance with the so-called national standards. But as many people already know, the food meeting national standards doesn't mean it's safe. In China's food industry, there is a saying, first-rate products are exported, and second-rate products are sold domestically. It means that the standards of food products exported to foreign countries aren't the same as those sold in China. As early as more than a decade ago, the Chinese media reported that the standards of the food industry in China were confusing, with national standards, industry standards, local standards, enterprise standards, and so on. It is said that the formulation of a standard requires a large amount of data collection and verification, and the cost is high. While the state subsidy is limited, a lot of the expenses are often sponsored by businesses. That is to say, the standard is infused with the will of businesses, and they benefit from the low standard they sponsored. Imagine, allowing business sponsorship to be blatantly involved in the standard-setting process. 
such a standard is not likely to be independent or authoritative. Even if China exports its so-called first-class products, many food products from Chinese companies, such as dairy products, find it difficult to enter markets with stringent standards, such as the European Union and the US markets. As a parent, who would want their children to grow up eating additives and hormones? If children are fed with this kind of food from kindergarten until they go to university, at all of the important stages of their growth and development, who will be at ease? Chinese parents hold their babies in the center of their palms, as the Chinese expression goes, since they were born, giving them supplements since they were a few months old, racking their brains to make nutritious meals and trying to protect them from junk food as much as possible. Then the school tells the parents that their children have to eat additives at school five days a week. It's understandable that parents are upset, and the serving method, shockingly, is to cook the plastic bags directly in boiling water or microwave them. After heating, won't the food become toxic? Won't it affect the children's health if they're consumed over a long period of time? All these questions are like boulders hanging over the hearts of parents. Regarding the debate on whether pre-made food can be brought into schools, a well-known financial commentator in China has expressed his viewpoint, and the video is said to be a favorite online in China. Can pre-made food enter the school? The answer is actually very simple. I don't think there is a need to argue about whether the pre-made food is nutritious or safe. Although it's where a windfall of wealth has been in the past few years, and the scale of the industry is getting bigger and bigger. The most important issue, for something that has had no standards so far, is who should be the first to eat this type of food. That is to say, for such a thing with no standards, it shouldn't be experimented in schools first. Where should it be experimented first? If it's good and should be promoted, then let the government officials try it first. That is to say, it should be tried out in the government cafeteria first to verify that the pre-made food is safe. Then they can enter schools. I think that this is the right order. The rest of the discussion really doesn't make sense. If government officials have consumed pre-made food and proved it to be safe, and they promote it, then students have no reason to reject it. I think the reasoning is simple. But what are government officials eating? This is a scene from a government cafeteria somewhere in China. It's said that they spend 2 yuan or less than 30 US cents for a meal. Look at the kinds of food they eat. It has nothing to do with pre-made dishes at all. In the US, it's said that their future president rides the school bus to and from school just like the average kid, so US school buses are pretty sturdy. But this sort of reasoning won't work in China. Ordinary people are treated very differently from officials. Of course, when it comes to entertaining foreign guests, the CCP is even more generous. At this year's Hangzhou Asian Games, which took place from late September to early October, we saw this lavish buffet. For only $4, one can enjoy any of the 265 dishes. It is said that Hangzhou lacks gourmet food, but there are simply too many good things to eat in this media village in the Asian Games village. Here's the restaurant. Have a plate. Red braised meat. I feel like for 20 bucks, this is worth it. So much food. Wow, there are so many dishes here. And then there's also this KFC and Pizza Hut dining area where you can get all kinds of fried chicken and pizza. Gosh, gosh, gosh. Can you just eat all this? Yes, help yourself. Oh my goodness. Ha ha ha. I remember this cake is quite expensive when you buy it alone. 26 yuan. Take one and I'll get my money back. Thanks, guys. There are all kinds of snacks and fruits too. Drinks and ice cream. Look at how much stuff I got. With this kind of food, it shouldn't be a problem to eat here for 20 days. As we explained in the previous episode, the central government in Beijing has emphasized the need to strengthen the pre-made food industry in its document 1 this year. 
This is the fundamental reason why a large number of schools in China have recently switched to the use of pre-made food to provide meals for students. It has become a hot topic in the community as parents are rallying against it and delivering homemade meals at school gates. In the face of this outcry, China's Ministry of Education has issued a statement saying that it is inappropriate to forcefully promote pre-made food in schools because there isn't yet a standardized system, certification system, and other effective supervision mechanisms for pre-made food. But for parents, the panic isn't over yet because pre-made food falls in line with the current policy direction of the CCP. There is an inherent difference between China's pre-made food and that of Japan's, for example, which has been practiced for decades. While Japan's pre-made food is anchored on the nutritional well-being and health of its citizens, China's pre-made food is tied to commercial interests and the needs of the CCP regime. There is a possibility that in order to prepare for the US-China confrontation to reach the stage of China being fully sanctioned and blockaded, or to provide strategic logistical support for a possible war in the Taiwan Strait, the CCP will have to import large quantities of strategic food for stockpiling. Apart from military supplies, it's also imperative to stockpile enough food for the general society to ensure stability. Therefore, the development of pre-made food has become a form of strategic reserve. If this is the case, whether parents like it or not, the battle against pre-made food will be a long one. Some Chinese have expressed sarcasm this way. They say eating pork is good for calcium intake. My pigs are more calcium deficient than people. In fact, pigs like to eat fresh vegetables as much as people do. But to save labor costs, I choose pre-made food. Ah uh, no, it's pre-made feed. Every time I make a few hundred pounds of it, with all kinds of additives and flavor enhancers, it becomes colorful and tasty, which looks good but isn't healthy. Usually in three or four months, a healthy piglet becomes so full of fat that can hardly walk. But for me, I don't care whether the piglets are healthy or not, as long as they can grow meat and give birth to piglets one after another, that's enough. Sometimes the piglets will cry out for fresh vegetables, and the older sows will fight me for pre-made feed that is not to their liking. But under my friendly management, they have no choice and no right to revolt. No matter how they revolt, they can't escape their fate of being slaughtered.